Welcome back to the synthesis phase of the orthographic drawing series. Through this next set of instructionals, we will be looking at the production of standalone pattern presentations focusing on style, composition, and the effectiveness of communication. In this video, we will focus on presentations prepared by professional practices that are aimed at conveying an idea as opposed to two technical communication prepared for a builder. Carl Friedrich Schinkel was an architect of some renown during the early 19th century, with most of his best work constructed in Berlin, with his Altus Museum finished in 1830, perhaps his best known. The drawings of his practice are executed in simple but exquisite detail that resonate even today, over 180 years later. We will look at one presentation for a garden house situated at Potsdam in the grounds of Sanssouci on Berlin's urban fringe. The style of drawing is indicative of the technology of production available at the time. The drawings are carefully constructed pen and ink drawings drawn with simple projections. The attention to detail of the context and landscape is equivalent to the detail of the building so that the two merge seamlessly into one another. The drawings are accurate and easy to read and consequently easy to produce. The building's party is quite simple and can be represented with a small plan drawing. The single point perspective of the approach view is aligned with the plan in such a way that the two are complementary and read well together. The efficiency of the presentation belies this intricacy and though only two views are shown on this slide, it is more than enough information to develop an impression and opinion about the building proposition. Here is the same building depicted from the side facing the large pond. The activity of the scene and important aspects such as the reflection in the water are all drawn with the same attention to detail. It is understandable that we could not achieve the quality of drafting shown here, but we can take away a sense of the simplicity and thoroughness of the presentation through a very select set of drawings done well and aligned on the sheet in an elegant and very simple manner. Moving forward in time and closer to home, we are going to look at some drawings of Marion Mahoney Griffin. Marion is the essential right hand but often understated and even unrecognised partner of Walty Burley Griffin, who was credited as the master planner of Canberra. Marion is now acknowledged as the author of many of the presentations produced by the practice, and expositions of her work reveal a combination of poetry and efficiency of style that expresses a strong sense of place and context. Here is an early pen and ink with watercolour drawing done by Marion in the early years of their Australian practice. The rendering was done during a visit to Tasmania and what is interesting about the work is firstly the obvious enthusiasm and passion for the Australian landscape as well as in my opinion clear echoes of the stylistic approach of Japanese woodblock prints from a century earlier. Referencing or being influenced by other pictorial styles, whether consciously or unconsciously, can guide the development of our own style and presentation repertoire. Borrowing or referencing can provide clues to the structure of our own compositions, and Japanese woodblock prints are a great source of inspiration, as well as providing some useful compositional strategies. This print is from perhaps the best-known Japanese woodblock artist, Katsushika Hokusai and was completed sometime between 1829 and 1833 as part of the series 36 Views of Mount Fuji. Though not all the prints in the series follow the same compositional structure, what is interesting here is the attention of detail of everyday life as well as using fog and cloud to edit the middle ground to produce views that seem natural but the scaling and perspective have been significantly distorted. Here is another work from the same series by Hokusai and it also adopts the same compositional technique of using landscape and landscape effects to edit the middle ground and to blend in an elegant and seamless way the composition. The majesty of the overall view in combination with snapshots of everyday life brings the images to life. The unusual crop of the boat with the landscape foreground element only looks strange when we really begin to focus on it. The simple use of colour helps unify the composition without making the images too fussy as well as easy to read. Using the context and landscape to mediate the middle ground as demonstrated in these images gives us some hints how we may use similar techniques with entourage to unify our sheets which may have a mix of views, some orthographic, some three-dimensional and all at different scales. 
The next two images by woodblock artist Tsukoika Yoshitoshi deploy similar compositional techniques of the middle ground. However, the landscape has been significantly stylized. These prints were made very late in the period when the style of woodblock prints were popular and recognizing the fact that the image is still over 120 years old, the style seems both effortless and very contemporary. The final woodblock print from Yoshitoshi strips the image back further and uses very simple edits of the foreground and background to balance the images and leave the middle ground virtually empty. Compare the sparseness of the previous image with a view of the Thomas P. Hardy house by Marion Mahoney. The extreme perspective and the mere suggestion of the landscape creates a powerfully emotive image of the architectural project that engages the reader at an altogether different level than a presentation simply focused on the dissemination of information. Climbing down a little from the sparseness of the previous image, here is a presentation of a house that is part emotion and part information. The three-dimensional views of the key outside and inside views frame the presentation top and bottom. A simple plan of each level is in the middle of the sheet. The frame of the image blends with the landscape and entourage and sometimes the landscape breaks and integrates the frame to help balance the overall composition and to avoid it looking too stiff. Here is another example using the same compositional strategy. However, the perspective in this case is a sectional perspective so we can see part of the inside space in combination with an external view. This final presentation is more sparse with the focus on an emotional response to the design proposition through the emphasis of the context and external appearance and its fit with the site. The plan arrangement is reduced to a postage stamp size in the composition. However, due to the simplicity of the plan, it is still legible even at this small scale. For many projects, the plan can be reduced significantly so that it is almost the same as a diagram. However, this works only if the emphasis is on another larger statement rather than a strategy for simply cramming more drawings onto a page. The next example is a presentation used to win the competition for the redevelopment of Dublin's Temple Bar District. The open call for ideas was made at a time when work was quite slow in Ireland. There were many talented small to medium sized practices operating at the time. The winning proposal was authored by a collaboration between eight separate practices. Getting such a large and disparate group to work together in the first instance is a triumph, but to win the competition is another altogether. Other than the challenges of finding a common set of design strategies and ideas, the presentation needed to synthesize a diverse range of presentation styles and capacities. Here, one aspect of the scheme is presented that demonstrates the Poodle Bridge. One of the main strategies employed by the team's response was to create a new set of urban spaces from the combined residual back of house spaces of the existing pattern of buildings. This meant that not only new spaces were formed but new faces of buildings were also created. The design called for new parts of buildings as well as full buildings. The companion drawings shown here show a plan how it merges and knits in with the overall existing urban pattern whereas the presentation on the right focuses only on the new elements that are needed. The drawings were done by different people, however the message conveyed the design intention was consistent. The drawings were different but complementary. And here is another representation of the same space but presented in a style that attempted to reveal the life of the square depicted in a cheerful and artful manner. This is another of the proposed spaces in the scheme. This time the three styles of drawing are combined on a single panel with the hybrid unreal view attempting to convey some of the vibrancy and colour being projected about the new space complemented by the measured and conventional drawings underneath. The contrast of styles and emphasis is consistent with all the other aspects of the design scheme. So whilst the contrast on a single page can be stark, it is done so for dramatic effect and is executed consistently throughout the presentation. As more and more presentation is done using digital tools, the style of presentation and composition has evolved. Rather than a single overall hand and framing as seen in the work of Marion Mahoney, or the diversity of styles on separate drawings aggregated on the one page as seen in Group 91, we are more and more blending drawings and images in a single composition. This hybrid style can be effective but can also be problematic. Many hybrid presentations can look chaotic and are difficult to read, where the presentation, rather than the ideas, shout for attention. It's a fine line to tread as many claim 
that cryptic but enticing presentations engage the viewer to study the presentation more carefully but equally it can also switch us off as deciphering the image may become just too difficult this presentation in some senses owes more to Marion Mahoney than other hybrid presentations. The composition uses a variety of scales and orthographic projections to give an overall sense of the design proposition. The bold use of colour helps to unify the composition and form an opinion about the imagined context. Entourage is applied in a simple manner using basic Photoshop techniques. This presentation is moving more in the direction of cryptic hybrid presentation styles. It is using a surprisingly small number of drawings and the drawings are not particularly well resolved. In some senses, perhaps the author recognised that the drawings were incomplete and tried to use a highly nuanced texture laden presentation to both unify and give character to the presentation. They have used photographs of models alongside hand drawn sections and scans of textures to layer up a rich but perhaps overly complex presentation. This final example uses a similar technique but is done in a more refined and less dirty way. Though the composition is well balanced and seamlessly put together from a range of sources including digital models and simple orthographic drawings, it still suffers from medium overwhelming the message. It is difficult to make informed judgments of the scheme when some basic information such as scale and form and materials are represented in such an ambiguous way. It comes across more like a pitch for a starting idea or an art installation rather than an architectural proposition. However, it is easy with the digital tools at our disposal to unconsciously drift into this style of presentation. We need to keep asking ourselves whether it is appropriate. This now ends the video where we have touched on some compositional and stylistic approaches to presentations created by professional designers. Be sure to check out the companion video where we discuss presentations done by students and share with you the techniques that we believe have worked well and give you some ideas for your own presentations. Thanks again for watching.